Hi, I'm Katinda Ndola and welcome back to the Online Prosperity Show where today I'll be giving you some insights about love, relationships, self-love, judgment and everything in between. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've brought you none other than the confidence and self-esteem coach, uh, Katinda. Katinda Ndola, how are you today? I am doing fabulous and so privileged and honored to be here and to be alive and to share the screen with everybody. Fantastic. You know, at the end of the day, we are always here to live, to learn and to contribute. But one of the things that really matters in life is for us to live our best lives. Now, as human beings, one of our deepest rooted desires is to have a meaningful life and have a happier existence. And you seem to have embodied that through your teachings, your courses, and everything else that comes along with it. And that's the reason why we've brought you along here, Katinda. All right, so before we get started, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you actually got started as a confidence and self-esteem coach. Oh boy, where do we begin? You know, this is a long story. It takes me back to when I was in grade five. I was 10 years old. I was bullied at school. You know, it's always typical. We all get bullied some, at some stage of our lives, but I got bullied as a child in school. And I remember the kids, I was very skinny and I had short hair. My mother, I never used to allow my mother to do my hair. So she decided to cut it. It was just easier. And then when I went to school, because I was so skinny and I was tall, the kids started calling me daddy long legs. They said I looked like a boy. Um, they made me cry because of course at that age you cry, you're not resilient enough to, to know how to manage that kind of, um, it's not even abuse, what do I call it? They're just bullying. And then because of that, I started being a very elusive child. So, you know, like I would come up with lies or oh, I'm not feeling well, so I don't have to go to school. And, because I couldn't say what was going on. And I think it's something that a lot of people um, get, get to do as children. So you don't know how to articulate, this is a problem. So you just try to find excuses of how to tell your parents that you don't have to go to school. But that continued for a long time. And then my parents kind of obviously at some point it came to pass, they had to know what was going on. So I had to move schools just because I was the best option. And from that experience as a child who was happy, bubbly, happy family, that shifted a lot of things for me. So I started becoming really quiet, analyzing myself, didn't like what I looked like in the mirror. And I went through high school with that kind of thoughts where I didn't think I was beautiful enough. I didn't feel I was special. I didn't think I was worthy of anything. I was not enough of anything. And um, so fast forward, I finished high school and then I don't even know where this courage came from. I saw on TV, they were looking for models. And I don't know, nobody in my family was ever a model. I had never known anybody who has been a model. And I saw that and I thought I could do that. But I don't know, I was one of those very insecure, didn't believe in myself, all those things. And then I, I, I called them up and asked them, what's this about and everything. And I went for an audition and I got the job and I was like, oh, this is interesting. So then I went to modeling school as well to just, you know, department to become, to be taught how to walk, how to be, how to put your makeup, how to put clothes together. And that in that space, when I started getting those jobs, the challenge was there were so many beautiful women, you know, it's competitive, but I still had that thing in me because I knew I didn't believe in myself. I didn't think I was good enough. So I was always comparing myself with other people, thinking they're better looking than this, but I was getting the work. Obviously, I had character that got me the jobs. And because of that shift, I realized, ooh, things can be better. I don't have to feel bad about myself. Obviously, something's good because I'm getting the work. Nobody is saying anything wrong. But having said that, life is life, right? So I'm still insecure. I haven't worked on those insecurities because nobody even knows how to work. You know, this coaching thing, nobody even knows or knew what that was. So fast forward 20 years later, or maybe I would say in between after my modeling and in the years and up to now, maybe now, I lived my life with low self-esteem. I covered it very well because confidence, you can fake it. And I was faking it for a long time because I could, but low self-esteem, 
you can fake it because that's how you feel and how you love yourself and all those things. You can't fake that to you. And what I found is when I ran my businesses, I used to have a hair salon, a bar, a restaurant. I was okay. I was confident. I did all these things. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, I'd love to be like you. And I'm thinking, no, no, you don't want to be like me. I got low self-esteem, honey, you know? But then what triggered was the stories I got to hear from the women, especially in the hair salon. Those stories were always about complaining about their relationships, about their men. Why can they find a man? Why are men like this? You know, and I was thinking, is this, do you have to go for counseling to find the answers to these questions? <laughs> and because I didn't know, you know, like I was listening to them and I'm thinking, I might be looking confident, honey, but mm -mm. I've got low self-esteem, but I just put it on. I dress good. I look good. I talk well, but down inside, I'm not that confident. I'm so insecure. When I look in the mirror, I feel like I'm a fake. I don't think that's me because the world doesn't know that, but I know that. And because of that, you know, constant conversations with the women, listening to their pain, to their suffering, I started to explore and figure out there has to be a better way to tackle this situation. Because why are we always talking about relationships? Why are we always complaining about, oh, I don't feel good enough, or oh, people judge me? Why are we so insecure? So because of that, I got triggers from that. And I'm a seeker. I'm one of those people. I'm always seeking. I'm always looking for something. I, again, I, was, oh, I had a relationship breakdown at some point. At that point, I think my business, my relationship, everything was all over the place. And then I was sitting on the computer, you know, one of those days, bored, not knowing what you're doing, just passing time with no purpose. No, it's not a meaningful day. And I was on the internet. And then all these pop-ups, you know, things come up. And depending if you're crazy enough to click. And I saw something about a seminar where Richard Branson was going to be um, the guest speaker. And I was like, okay, I'd never been to a seminar. So I had no clue what this world was. But I was like, I'm right. seeking. Yes, I'm seeking. So I don't know. And the only way to know is to go and find out. So I signed up for this seminar. And then while I signed up, the person on the phone said to me, oh, if you'd love to stay and have drinks and dinner with Richard Branson, you know, you pay extra money and this is what's going to happen. You get photos with him. I right. said, yeah, cool. And I'm like, where's this courage coming from? I don't even know. Is this Katinda talking or is it somebody else talking? <laughs> and I just went with the flow. And I won't say because they're marketing and they got me into it. I was looking for something. So I went to this seminar and after going to this seminar, just different things started to happen. There was a big shift for me. I mean, I was listening to people talking about building wealth, writing books, oh, being in personal development, developing better relationships, being in a better situation. And I'm going, what is this? And then in the process of all that, I realized that was called coaching, how you coach people. And the only thing I thought about coaching was coaches like sports people. I never thought of a coach. You could be a personal development coach or a relationship coach. So that's how my journey kind of started to kick started. Wow, absolutely. And I'm, I'm really happy that you took yourself from that shy little girl that couldn't um, face the bullies at school to actually become one of the most recognized faces in the you know modeling uh, industry so to speak now do you think a lot of people go through those childhood traumas up until adulthood and it actually stops them from being doing and having um a happier existence you know just based on something that somebody said when they were at lunch school uh, at lunch during um, you know break at school well i think jim Rohn did say you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with right so childhood trauma is one thing that a lot of people have. I think we can almost like would say we haven't, nobody escapes that. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's your environment, it's your family, it's your school. There's always some sort of thing that happens. But I think what happens is people don't recognize what this is though. And this is why they have a lot of maybe psychologists and people who are trying to help people heal their inner child. Because that inner child is crying. You know, we're all grown up, yeah, but that inner child, that inner baby is in there saying, hey, I want you to love me. I want you to feel good about me. I want you to hold my hand. So I think we, a lot of people go through life and they never get, or maybe nobody ever knows how to support them or help them because again, we're all in denial. People are afraid of therapy because they think there's nothing wrong with me. But I believe that is a reason why it holds people back from achieving, being, or doing whatever they need to do, but also you don't become the best version of yourself because you've got something holding you back. You've got that inner voice saying you're not good enough. 
why are you not good enough? Because maybe your mother called you stupid when you were 15 or 10 years old. And I usually like to say, as a parent, we have to be very careful how we speak to our children because that, that becomes their inner voice. They yeah. don't forget it. Like I know for me, there's certain things when I'm about to do it, I remember my mother saying, you better do this. So it, as an adult, it comes to you. So that inner voice becomes what you used to hear. And it was always negative. It sticks with you for a long time until you get somebody who can help you go through the healing stages to heal and forgive and let go. Because otherwise you're stuck. Absolutely. You know, and um, I just noticed that as a result of maybe the confidence and self-esteem academy programs that um, you're teaching people, some of your clients are actually experiencing greater joy, love, fulfillment in their lives just because they have become sick of becoming average. At what point does somebody recognize that, okay, enough is enough. I really need to get help, um, you know, when it, when it comes to things like that, because some people would go on up until the end of their lives and some people nip it in the bud and actually then uh, start moving forward uh, in, the, in their lives. You know, I think there comes the times in everybody's life when you're sick and tired. And when you're really sick and tired of the same thing over and over and over, I think there comes a time when you realize, hey, there could be better, right? And I feel some people are kind of luckier than others because maybe the environments they're in, you could go to a workspace and you work in an office where there's a few people who are very inspiring, very, you know, they've got good vibration, their frequency is so high and they're always happy people. And maybe if you kind of not shy, you can always go, why are you so happy all the time? What is it you're doing that I don't know? Or what is the secret? You know, what because you the mean? thing is, no, because I think when you look at people who are always looking, not necessarily just happy, joyful, because joyful is inside, happy is external. There's a reason they're like that. What is it they know that I don't know? And I'm very curious, especially even now that I know how to be in that joyful state. If I see other people in that state and they're always excited, you know, they don't, react to situations, they respond. I'm thinking, who's your teacher? I want to know that person. I want to get to know them because I think there's something I'm going to learn from them. Maybe they might tell me something which is going to open my eyes and it's going to take me in another, you know, it's going to change my, the trajectory of my life. So I think a lot of times, sometimes it's difficult to get people out of that deep because people, if you're not willing to change, nobody can force you. It has to, you have to give yourself permission. You have to allow yourself to become a better human being. But I guess the reality is, I say to people, you do not want to be a force. You do, oh, how do I say it? A force, a victim of change. You want to be a force of change. So when you're a victim of change is when things happen to you and you're forced to change because you have no other options. But when you're a force to change, you decide, I don't like my relationship with myself. I don't love me, but how can I start working on myself? So you do the journey. You start the work before something happens. You don't have to wait until you have a relationship breakdown to realize, oh, I should start loving myself because, oh my gosh, now I'm alone. I don't have somebody, but that's the thing. So a lot of people wait until they become a victim of something before they can start changing. Absolutely. Now, would you appreciate this, that each and every one of us is a very unique individual. So maybe living a best life is very exclusive to one particular person and your best life might just maybe reflect um you know your true values and basically your experience in life and it's made up of things that make you happy and it's colored by what you think helps you make a difference now how would a coach be able to actually extrapolate an individual's version of who they're supposed to be and um you know how, how can a, a person help a coach um get to that stage with them i think that's a coach's job to kind of analyze to have a conversation and the conversation will be something like first of all i like when i meet a new person even forget about being a coach just on a random you know you go to networking or anything when i meet people and if people ask what do you do for a living I don't think that's a very good question because that's not a very good way to start conversations because then what do I tell you? I'm a lawyer, I'm a coach. Okay, well, coach, what do you do? So I like to ask people, what is something that inspired you today? And then that opens up a conversation. And while they start talking to you, you start to pick because if you say what inspired you today, chances are they'll say something positive or negative. 
So the sooner they go to negative, you know, this person, it's a cry for help. They're not coming from a place of love. This is just how I look at it. If, and it's coming back to just people in general. When you're talking to people who've got anger issues or whatever is going on, anything that's a negative emotion, I feel it's usually a cry for help, something deeper than what you see. And so for me, I've learned that. So I know when I ask you that question, what brings you here today? What do you want to talk about? But just tell me what inspired you today or what something that inspires you on a daily basis. You're going to open up. And from that conversation, we're going to take it whichever way everything feels fit to go. So that's my starting point. Absolutely. You mentioned two things. Uh, one was Jim Rohn um, mentioning about the average of five people that you hang around. But nowadays, you're not around five people. You are around five billion people on social media. How can we, um, you know, because obviously what, what we need to do as human beings is follow society's expectations. And how can we actually not let social media influence how we feel or how we react each and every single day? Because that seems to be a big problem for a lot of people. Okay. Prosper, first of all, other people's expectations is not your reality. Okay. That's not, it's, that's because again, that society dictates these things. It's like being female. Oh, you have to be this figure. You have to look like this. It's other people's expectations that actually makes everybody so unhappy. So in terms of you're the average of the five people you choose to spend time with, I think it's a personal choice. This is not about, um, it just happening to you. It's a choice you make because on social media, yes, you've got 5 billion people. You make a choice. You need to follow people that inspire you people that suit your soul, people that give you something that you, when you go, you think about, you're learning something, not just entertainment. Don't get me wrong. Entertainment is great, but you have to choose who are the people. They don't have to be five. They can be more than five, but people that do something for your soul. They teach you something. They help you make money. They inspire you. Um, they make you happy. They keep you fit. So maybe somebody follows, um, let's say, for example, Tony Robbins who happens to be my coach. So Tony Robbins, you follow him, you get inspired. You know, he's a personal development guru. He does all that kind of stuff. Maybe you're into fitness. You follow somebody who's a fitness person. You're into spirituality. You follow, I follow Sanguru. He's a spiritual master or teacher. You know, there's different aspects of life that you can find the different people, if they're the top of their game or whoever it is that you like that is in that space. You know, personal development, relationships, spirituality, intimacy, um, love and relationships, finances. Um, what else? I mean, it's just life, right? So you're going to have to make that choice though. It's a tough one for a lot of people, but they have to make the choice. Absolutely. There's somebody sitting in the conversation, in the audience right now, just thinking I've always been like this. My habits are already, you know, knee deep. I can never be happy. You know, I've always been told, um, I'll never amount to anything. What words can you give to that person in order for them to actually get up and start enjoying, um, you know, the best version of who they can be? I think the best place to start, I'm very big on self-love. You know, when you don't love you, how can you love another? And the truth of the matter is something I was talking to a client before and I was saying a lot of people don't love themselves and other people, this is in a family scenario. We love, we could love a person in the family so much, but they don't even love themselves enough to care for themselves, but other people love and care for them. It doesn't work because it's love. I always say love starts with you. You've got to self love, self care. It's about you. And the thing I say people should do, no matter how bad you're feeling, the truth is stand in front of a mirror. You know, the mirror does not lie. And that's a very hard exercise for a lot of people because when you stand in front of the mirror, it's you and your image. And you cannot lie to that image on the mirror. That's you. And I think the first thing is, which is the, I know it's a very tough exercise for a lot of people. It was very difficult for me too, is to stand in the mirror and look at yourself in the eye and say, I love you, like pointing at yourself, I love you. And you can try to say that three times. It won't come naturally. It'll feel fake because it's like, what is this? But you need to give it a go because the thing is, you think you're not worthy of love. You think you're not worthy of anything. It's not true. That is just your mind, your negative mind, that inner voice lying to you. That is not true. Nobody is born in this world as a negative person. These are learned traits. We get to learn how to be negative and habits and everything. And you can change that if you want to, but there's a lot of tools 
we can use. And I just use the mirror technique as a first tool of, you know, looking in the mirror, looking at yourself and going, hey, I love what I see. And I'm blessed and grateful. And really the other one, which is even more, I think it should start with gratitude. You need to be grateful. First of all, you're able to even think. You're able to see, you're able to look, you're able to eat. Hey, that is gratitude galore right there. So if you're grateful, it starts the process of developing better habits. It starts the process of better thoughts. It just gets you in that momentum of being a better person as well. Absolutely. All that you're talking about uh, sounds very nice and too good to be true. I mean, obviously, sitting sitting in front of a mirror and, um, you know, telling yourself that you love yourself, that involves taking a lot of action. What if I just wake up one day and I don't feel like doing anything and or maybe you might there might be a suggestion of taking an action that feels scary or we fear that if we do that, we might actually end up hating ourselves too much, you know, because you can't say that back to yourself. Is there an easy way for somebody to um, actually achieve that or start experiencing the love that you talk about? Okay, let's just go. What is fear? False, I like to define it, false expectations appearing real. So if you're gonna wake up afraid, what is in your head? What are these expectations? What are those thoughts that you're creating in your mind that are creating the fear that's making you feel weak? Because this is all about feeling weak because when you're afraid, you feel weak. So I would say may, become a best friend to fear because fear is actually not a bad thing because we've got healthy fears and obviously we've got unhealthy fears as well. But you need to make friends with fear and all you need to do is just maybe just even just get a glass of water. Start your day by getting a glass of water. And there's always, I think there's a bit of a science where they say the best time to have a glass of water is when you get up in the morning because that, you know, um, it lubricates your insides and it starts things moving and working. So I think maybe just simple. You don't have to think too much mental stuff. Just think the basics. Get up, stretch. Because, you know, most people just jump out of bed. Do the basic stretch. Get a glass of water and maybe just chill. You know, because sometimes we don't always feel amazing every day. The days you wake up and you're like, I'm just going to lie in bed all day. I feel lazy. I feel weak, whatever it is. But it's okay to be like that sometimes, but you can't allow that to be all the time because if it becomes regular, then we've got an issue. Absolutely. But Katinda, I'm looking at you right now. Obviously, you've got your hair done. You're beautiful. <laughs> you mentioned you used to own a saloon, which means um, you know how to look after yourself. You were a model, obviously, that automatically takes me out of uh, any leagues or anything else somebody who is watching this is just probably thinking you probably have your life all made out you probably have everything working out for you you've never experienced what i'm going through you know how can you actually then say yes i can actually regain my self-confidence when you haven't gone through any of the stuff that i've gone through the truth of the matter the truth is everything happens with time sequence and space we've all gone through things it's different depend and again it's all about how you respond as opposed to how you react it's how you resilient enough to realize oh i guess it's more life experiences what has happened to you that has made you more resilient and what are the lessons you've learned so i think for some of us to get anybody even including you prosper for us to be where we are today we have a story and when we go back to the stories, I mean, I was talking one time to my publisher and he was going to me, oh, you know, you have to always give people a story when you're speaking in front of people. And I said, well, what kind of story do you want? I said, everybody talks about sad stories. You know, they talk about suicide they talk about sleeping in a car. You know, I said, I never had that life, but I've got a different type of trauma or different type of things that happen. I mean, most of us have gone through lost people in our families, you know, we've lost partners, we've lost parents which is a common denominator with a lot of people so everybody knows somebody or family that has lost some a loved person that's a common thing which is in life we can't escape it i mean jim Rohn, i think said life is risky you can't get out of it alive so you may as well take the risk right so you can tell i'm very passionate about this teacher this teacher i love this jim Rohn teacher he's amazing um so i think the reality is we all have different life journeys some harder than other people but it's not about comparing with each other everybody has their life journey and it's a matter of thinking how do i grow from what i've gone through what were the lessons because they say if you don't learn the lesson you'll repeat it 
And next time, once be ten twice shy, right? So I think it's just looking at what has happened to your life, what has happened, why did it happen? I always say everything happens. It's not a. It's it comes to you as an. It's a. What did they say? It's a coincidence invitation. Invitation. There's a way I put it. Yeah. It's energetic invitation. It never comes to you without a reason. There is a reason why things happen to people. And a lot of times is really, I think, learn the lessons real quick. And I think what the issue is with a lot of people, we've not been coached or had teachers or family or whoever is in your surroundings that stops you in your tracks and says, hang on a minute, let's analyze what just happened. Okay, this is what happened. Why did it happen? Okay, what did you learn from it? And how can you grow from that experience? We don't stop and do that. And that's why I remember one of my spiritual teachers was saying, we go from 20 years old to 30, to 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50, 60, boom, express. We never stop to pause, hang on a minute, I'm 30. What happened between 20 and 30? We don't look at all those things, we just, we just go. And then when you wonder when you're 60, you're like, oh my gosh, what the hell happened? I'm 60? I don't have this. I didn't do this. I haven't, my life is not meaningful. Why? Because nobody teaches you that you need to self-reflect, stop, pause, disconnect from everything and just do reflection. It's really critical, I think. And I think um, really we're talking about experiences. People have to do all those things. You have to really start reflecting. You have to really find it's your path. It's your lessons. What did you learn from it? What can you change? How can you do better? Fantastic. You did mention and you keep repeating about disconnecting. So I'm just looking, besides me, I've got a mobile phone that I need to connect with people on social media. I've got my car that's outside that, that I just wanna make sure it's shiny, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I've got my TV screens and I've got my family, my kids and everything else. I've got my books behind me, I've got my stuff. But still, none of that is making me any happier because when I bought all of these things, they say, buy this, do this, be that, and it becomes, um, you know, a, an expression of your happiness. Now, one of the lessons that you learned and the experience that you now have is to never have attachments to things because life challenges um, come and go. Can you just touch up on that a little bit? Because I seem not to be able to, get rid of my phone and um, you know, anything else that comes along with it, because this seems to be what my life is now entangled around. Okay. I'm so glad you brought up this attachment thing because I'm so grateful to the source energy or whatever that is for giving me or bringing me to that realization that you should never ever be attached to anything, including your family, your children. And I got this from one of my spiritual teachers who's now passed on, um, that was Wayne Dyer. He talks about attachments and not attaching yourself to anything. And I think I'll talk for myself in terms of my life experience. I was in a relationship where I had a business. Uh oh, you're holding the phone. Just give it away for a little bit. Just no, no, no. Mm -mm. I'm just gonna give you a story here. So I was in a relationship where I was running the business and living in the same space with the person I was with. And when that relationship died or when that relationship came to an end, I had to make a decision. What do I want to do? Do I want to do what everybody else does? You know, go through the divorce courts and drag the kids through it and get depressed, stressed, get messed up and lose five years of my life in bad mental state? Or do I want to make a decision and go, you know what? The almighty gave me everything. I've got my hands, I've got my head, I've got my health. So the first thing for me, I always check with any scenario, even with negative people, I always go, what is the best wealth you've got? Your health. Without health, you're nothing. And a lot of people, you know, we talk about health is a new wealth because you can be wealthy. You just talked about, you got a car, you got your books, you got all these things. That, that's, that's material stuff. Guess what? It's good to have it. <laughs> because it gives you it's a desire it keeps you it gives you pleasure because it's a good thing don't get me wrong we work hard to achieve certain things but also we work hard to give away a lot of things because we realize they don't mean anything you know having a good car is nice but at the end of the day i'd rather have better health than have a car i mean I, if i didn't have a car i'd be walking or riding or scootering everywhere you know what i mean so i realized when my relationship came to an end i was thinking based on the trajectory of everybody who I've seen that I know that had gone through divorce. 
what did they all do? They went through, of course, there's the communication breakdown. No matter what you try, you try to be communicating properly. One person is not coming to the table, so it's a disconnect anyway. And I found, I told myself, what is the most important thing in my life right now? My health, and that especially my mental health. Because once you lose that, I don't know what else is left. I think it's just gets, it is a struggle the whole time. And when I made that distinction in my head, I decided I can work. I know how to do things. I can talk to people. I'm confident. Hey, come on, girl, get, get yourself together and just start a new project. And this is even when my coaching came into place because that was, again, I, would, I don't know whether I'd say I was a victim of change because I was transitioning and I wanted to do something and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And then I thought, hang on a minute. I'm going through something. That means there's a million other people going through the same thing. How can I be the one who's awake enough to go and support them with their self-esteem, with their confidence, with their relationships, with what's going on in all these things? I've got things. I've got the fire. I've got the momentum. And I'm feeling, you know, when they say, when you get inspired, they say inspiration doesn't last a very long time. So you're going to catch the wave while it's still there. Because once you miss it, it's, you're going to wait and it's not a guarantee it's going to come back because you just don't know what life's going to throw you. Something could happen and it just takes you down the deep. So I feel if people start to learn how to detach themselves from things, I mean, have them, but always just go, if they're not there, you're okay. If they're there, okay. But if somebody was to come to your house today and say, prosper, we're going to take you to Kalahari Desert with nothing. Just you and yourself and a few clothes. I mean, maybe maybe they give you your phone. I don't know why they'll give it to you. But anyway, that's even bad. What would you do? Would you not be so resourceful to figure out how to survive? Or would you just go, I'm in the Kalahari desert. I'm going to just drop dead because now I don't have my phone. I can't call anybody. I don't even know what there's water. I don't even know that I can walk. You brain stops. Nah, you're a human being and you're stronger than you know. Because people think they're weak. We're not weak. We're so strong. And if you're put in a situation like they talk about women and they say, oh, women, a strong, put them in a tea bag and you know how strong they are. But the truth of the matter, everybody is resourceful. We are born in this world with everything inside. And what is inside comes out. So if you've got that, and that's we going back to, you're going to start loving you, thinking how much you're worthy, you're precious, you're a gift to the world. You're not just a gift to yourself and your family. You're a gift to everybody, whoever crosses your path. It doesn't matter where, how, what. It could be just a smile on the, on the street. You are a gift and we need to experience you in your fullest potential. We need everything inside you to come out so we can enjoy and share it and celebrate. Yes. And I'm so passionate about this conversation. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and I'm, I'm just listening back here and thinking, you know, that's so much knowledge and that is so much personal growth that you have um, you know, acquired throughout, um, you know, this whole time. And I, I just wanted you to touch on that a little bit. How important is, you know, just that personal growth and empowerment, um, you know, towards you living a happier life? Or what sort of mindset do you, does one person need, um, you know, in order for them to actually succeed uh, in, in, in this whole um, you know, living your best life episode. Okay. I will start with how my spiritual teacher likes to call it. You have to teach yourself to be in a joyful state because if you're not in a joyful state and we are always seeking happiness, where is happiness? Is there somewhere? Is that, am I going to come to your house and find it? Where's happiness? Everybody's looking for something somewhere else. Where are we looking for all these things? they don't exist i mean it's an illusion really it's i feel like we would been we've been cheated really that's how i feel because we are always looking and you're talking before just going back to that attachment thing we buy a bigger car because we're looking for temporary happiness you do this it's happiness for just a little it's it doesn't last for very long so i feel you have to teach yourself to be in a joyful state and how you start doing that as i said is going inward Talk to yourself, self-reflect. Where are you coming from? What's happened to you in your life up to now? Where are you coming from? Journal that stuff, put it down, write it. And don't write it on the computer. Use a pen and paper. I love to do pen and paper because you know there's, they say there's a magic about when you're thinking from your head and you're writing things out, it actually releases and just opens you up and gives you more, it just flows, it's a flow thing. 
And I think if people start to just analyze where they've been, it could be a lot of triggers, unfortunately, because it could be a lot of people have had a lot of trauma and some really serious type of traumas. But if you're walking around today still suffering because you got hurt by somebody or somewhere at some point, if you never heal from that, you're never going to become your full potential. You're always going to be half person. You're always going to have pain and it's not worth it. Because again, when you go to that question of what else can I do? I, I know it comes, this is a very hard one. You have to let go. You have to have an open mind. Let yourself be. Allow yourself, give yourself permission to try new things. You know, you're talking about what type of mindset do you need? You need an open mindset a mind that's ready. You need to be a student all the time. Like I say to everybody, including yourself, I know we talk a lot, we say these things. I'm always two things. I'm always a student and a teacher at any one point in time. I'm never either or, or other. I'm always one of the two and sometimes it's both at the same time. Because at every conversation I have with you, with anybody, whether it's a kid or I'm learning something. So we have to allow ourselves to have that open mind, ready and willing to learn. And question things. You know, why don't people question things? And you're going to have, and we're not talking question anything, just your life. Why am I like this? Why am I so angry all the time? Why do I get triggered when she says this or he says that or they do this? Why do I have so much road rage? What is that about? And that's what I was listening to one of these teachers and she said, which was very interesting. If I gave you an orange and you squeezed it, Prosper, what comes out? Orange juice. Okay. If you put that orange in the sun, and you get it and squeeze it, what comes out? Still orange juice. <laughs> okay, so again, what are, what are we? When we've got so much anger in our body, so much resentment, so much hurt, so much revenge because somebody did something to me, what's inside us? And when you squeeze us, what comes out? Anger, Thanks. resentment, all right. those things. So it's not good stuff. So that's why you'll find people are angry, road rage, God knows everything that is just all messed up. It's because they're not in a joyful state and because they've got a lot of trauma, they've got a lot of hurt, they've got a lot of things that are negative that have happened to them and they haven't yet healed from that situation. So until you heal, you're going to be stuck for a long time. So I think for me, I would suggest for a lot of people not to worry about this stigma thing of, oh, you're going to see a therapist. I see a therapist as a maintenance thing, like a car. You know, you get your car, you don't take your car to the mechanic when it breaks down. You always do maintenance. Why would you do that and not do maintenance on yourself too? You're going to do your body maintenance. We all do twice a year. We do a dentist, you know, once a year you do this, you do that. We need to do the same for our mind. You need to speak to somebody. And even if it's not a therapist, find a decent, trusted friend, a coach, anybody who can take you to that level, who will listen to you, who will give you their time and say, hey, you know what? What is it that's going on? Just talk to me. Let's cry together. Let's share the pain. You know why? Because when, when we share the pain, guess what? It's halved. It's a problem solved. So I feel people don't need to feel alone because there is a lot of that lately after what's happened with the COVID, there's a lot of people being isolated or just the situations have become and they feel so isolated. They feel lonely. They feel alone. They feel like nobody understands them. It's not true. There is people out there in the world willing to open their arms and allow you to talk, allow you to just be you because you are special. Fantastic. Well, there is somewhere where I read um, in one of your books or maybe one of your speeches where you're talking about if you don't absolutely have anyone to turn to, you could go and hug a tree. Now, <laughs> can, <I> love, yes. <laughs> can you elaborate a little bit on that? Because a few people would have lost um, their relatives or friends or people that they can confide in. And some things might be a little bit embarrassing for people to start, um, you know, talking to people about um, how good is it to just maybe walk in nature or maybe just simply hug a tree, like you say? I tell you what, I'm a big believer. Now we're crossing, this is the spiritual side of all of us. You know, we're all spiritual beings having a human experience, right? So I feel we've lost our spirituality because we are all caught up in all the other stuff, all the noise, you know, as we're talking about attachments and wealth and everything else, we forget who we really are. And when you're hurting, like I'm going to give an example with COVID. 
we were all in lockdown, allowed to go out for half an hour, one hour, whatever. You can't be with anyone anywhere. So especially people who don't live with anybody else, that was a very lonely time. I mean, you can talk like we're talking. This is great, but I can't feel you. I can only talk to you. I can see you, but I don't feel. So I believe nature heals because that's what it is. It's just how the universe is. And I'm a big believer in walking in nature without shoes on. Just because I feel when you step on nature and you're stressed, it balances you out. And the reason I talked about the tree, I was actually reading up on one of that, the tree, um, as humans, we have, uh, we breathe out carbon dioxide, right? And the tree gives us oxygen. So in my thoughts and in my way, I thought, okay, if I go hug this tree, everything is on a frequency. Everything is vibrating. Everything's on a vibrational frequency. So if I hug this tree and it's got that oxygen vibration and I'm breathing out carbon dioxide and I'm stressed and everything, and they say, a hug, a 20, a 20 second hug is good for you. So I'm hugging this tree. I don't have to feel the warmth back or anything, but in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm taking a pose. I'm not thinking anything. I'm trying to pose my mind if I can. It's not easy for a lot of people, but you posing and you focus on what you're doing. I'm hugging a tree. What am I giving the tree? What's the tree giving me back? What frequencies are we exchanging? And I found that was so calming. I've done it a few times. So if I walk anywhere and I see a tree, I do it, but I always see there's a lot of ants on the trees. And for some reason, I think when you're afraid, you know, that fear thing, you get the pheromones and you're afraid. And if there's a dog that knows you're scared, it freaks you out. So I found very interesting. Most of the trees I hug, I always check and I see all these little ants going up and down. And guess what I do? I don't think about the ants being a problem. I just hug the tree. And for some reason, you know, with my big hair and everything, I never got ants on my body. I don't know how that's possible, but it never happened. Because you would think I'm hugging a tree, the ants are going through the tree, they should come on me too. They just never did. Because my intention was to just chill, relax, and just be in the present moment, be in the now. I'm here hugging a tree, we're exchanging, we need each other for something. I give you my carbon dioxide, you give me your oxygen. We are vibrating on different frequencies, we are sharing something. So I think it's a big thing. And it's, it can be weird for some people because you know, people are gonna see you do that, they think, are you losing your mind? It's true. But I think that's what I was saying. Other people's expectations is not your reality. So don't worry about what they think. You're gonna focus on what do you feel? How do you want to feel? You wanna feel joyful? You wanna feel happy, excited? You wanna feel healthy? you're gonna do what it takes to be healthy. And it doesn't involve anybody else, it involves just you. You're the only one who can make that happen. And you're the start, you, if you have family or people, you become the role model, you start the process. Absolutely. You know what, uh, Katinda, you have taken us on a journey. You've obviously helped us break that cycle of fear because you've disseminated what fear actually stands for, which is just false evidence appearing real. And then you've taken us um, you know, from all the episodes of self-sabotage that a lot of people are doing and, you know, helping them employ the power of positive thinking and also helping them now take action. Now, there's something that happens when somebody has been motivated and has been brought closer to the source of how they can actually be, do, and have a happier existence. They want to get started. They want to engage into something that might um, you know, move them to the next level, you know, increase their, um, you know, personal development and start on a journey with somebody who has taught them or who has helped them squeeze out that orange juice <laughs> here you're talking about. How can people uh, start their journey with, um, with you in order for them to actually start gaining that confidence and self-esteem that you've been telling us about today? Oh, okay. How can they start the journey with me? Wow. Okay. I'm on social media as Katinda Ndola. I think you better put that on there. But what I like to say is they can actually go to my website and just get some of those self-awareness tools that I have there. Um, there's a lot of things about, you know, it's just simple things that people think of sometimes very childish or for children. I actually have um, a self-love um, journal, which prompts you with questions for self-love things that you have to answer and you have to answer it. It's your, it's your private life, it's you have to do it, but you have to take inspired action. Because if you don't take action, nothing changes. 
nobody will change for you. you you're the only one who can change i mean like gandhi said be the change you want to see in the world it all starts with you so i've got a lot of self-awareness tools i even have a mandala you know the ones you know carl Jung used them to do you know when he was working with his patients and he found they really a mandala brings out your when you're coloring it it actually brings out how you feel what's going on inside you and it calms you down because you're not busy no phones check and that's an exercise i like to say to people as a stress relief it's actually very critical i found i was doing i was enjoying a lot of that with my son during covid because i was thinking no tv no telephones no mobile phones let's just do something together and we sit there and we just color the mandala or even you can even i found another thing i like to do is go to the beach and just draw it try to be creative and play that you know you draw the mandala you do different things and you just be present and intentional so they can do that um and the website is basically i think you would put it on the screen is confidence and self-esteem dot academy so there's also coaching calls on that website if somebody is interested in making a 15 minute call to me 30 minutes or 60 minutes and we can start your journey we can start talking we can start encouraging each other empowering inspiring hey we're here we're alive we are grateful so why not absolutely and and i really appreciate you taking the time with us today um and obviously answering the questions because i was looking at it as from a point of view of hey what if i'm somebody who is maybe skeptical or has tried everything uh in life and nothing seems to be working how can this um you know person um you know help me be do and have a happier existence and maybe that question is still lingering in somebody's mind and they just want one last piece of advice that you think would um you know help them start seeing life in a positive manner what is that one piece of advice that you sometimes go to by yourself or you just tell somebody um not like will smith you know in in, in the way of <laughs> yeah. people, but what's that one thing that you just put people back in line if you notice that um half of the things that they're talking about are not valid okay this is oh thank you for that question you know i i sometimes don't know i get so passionate about these things there's one question and it's also or maybe it's a self-reflection question and it's i like to say to people like if you come to me you're stressed and everything i don't say what's the matter with you i don't do that because what's the matter with you you go freaky you go crazy i go who is the matter with you because we know for sure a lot of people when whatever they're going through they always point fingers it's always someone else's problem someone else's fault somebody made me unhappy that's why i'm unhappy right so other people control your emotions because of how they behave you go crazy so the question is who is hurting you who is the matter with you who is the person you think has caused you the pain that makes you be in that negative state right now and when you ask yourself that question you can clarify to yourself and start your healing process because you'll be like, okay, I'm upset because she said this or he said this, hang on a minute. Why am I blaming them? What's my responsibility to this? Why am I reacting to them? Why, 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 why? And a lot of times think about it. It's always about us. It's never about other people. And a part of us is triggered because that part hasn't healed. That's why it always gets triggered by when people do stupid things. So it's question, ask yourself, who is the matter with you? Who are you blaming for your situation? Fantastic. And I if you keep, it. yeah, yeah, give yourself that answer and then work from there. I love that. I love, love that. You see, when I was growing up, uh, they used to say, <laughs> whenever you're pointing at somebody to say, oh, they are to blame. When you're pointing at somebody, you've got one finger pointing at yeah. them, but the three fingers are pointing back at you. So that means a lot more has to do with, you know, what, what it is that you are doing or claiming as part of the problem cause of it. Now, Katinda, I can't- Prosca, Prosca, before you go, another thing they can actually do, this is a very critical one. Everybody does this. Everybody has a bed, everybody sleeps at night. Let's assume, I mean, every, it gets dark, it's day and night. It doesn't matter where they have, you lie down somewhere. So the thing is when you go to sleep, before you fall asleep, ask yourself the question, what is bothering me and go to sleep? what is bothering me and go to sleep because what that does is it's when you're sleeping your subconscious mind somehow does all the 
you know, this is trying to figure out answers. And when you wake up in the morning, there's a possibility you'll get your answers because at the end of the day, answers are always within. It all starts with us. We always, as I said, we're looking outside for everything. If we stay still and ask ourselves the difficult questions, whatever that question is for you, you have the answer. And that's why as a coach, I find all I do is guide people. I don't tell you what to do. I just give you some, ask you some good questions. And before I know it, you're giving me solutions to your problem. And I'm thinking, you can do that. I didn't tell you. I just opened the door and you realize, oh, I never thought about that. So it's about leading people to see their blind spots in a safe environment, in a non-judgmental place and going, you know what, let's celebrate because we've had, we had some wins today. That's what it's all about. It's not about judging anybody. It's not thinking you're better or bad. No, it's finding what's going to work, why you're going to become a better human being and how you're going to live a meaningful life. Absolutely. I, I don't think I can add anything to that. And <laughs> Katinda, this has been a wonderful, wonderful um, you know, contribution that you've done with us here today. And I really appreciate you taking your time. And if you're watching this episode right now and you've watched up until now, I'm going to advise that you go onto the website, which I'm going to put on there, connect with Katinda Ndola, because I viscerally believe that each and every one of us should be doing have a happier existence. And from the team at um, the Online Prosperity um, Show, I want you to leave each day like it counts. And I want you to remember that it is your choice. The best life that is afforded to you is very unique to you. So basically, like what Katinda said, you know best um, you know, how to be, do, and have that. So you don't want to compare yourself to others. Just focus on living your best life and enjoy the learning, exploration, and all the experiences that come along the way. Katinda, I thank you so much for your time that you spent with us today. Thank you so much for showing the love and sharing the love. That was amazing. Bye for now. Bye for now.
Nice, nice. You see, I don't know. Do I need to repeat it again? We, yeah, no, no, that was good. The reason why we <laughs> put that at, 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 at the start is just so that if people don't watch this video, we, we both know why, right? <laughs> you know, it's because of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 